What's up, sinners? <laughs> Welcome to the Zopium Den, house of the anti Buddy duddy Bible study, and CJ and I welcome you. What's up, classmates? Yes. You ready to get this study party going? <laughs> All right. You know it's going to be a study party because I'm going to give the, I'm going to give the age disclaimer. Yeah, this is going to be a little PG-13. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know how Uncle Zoe going to do it. You, you know, you know, we're going to keep it, we're going gonna to keep it right and tight. Uh, you know, we, we don't try to step over the line or anything like that. But, you know, if you want to, you know, you know, review the video first. Hey, because when it comes to the word of God, I mean, you know, we want to train, you know, we want to be trained up in the Lord. You got to okay. train the youngsters up in the Lord, you know, yes. so the Lord, the, you know, the Lord is going to come correct with his studies. But sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, this, you know, the content may be a little bit, uh, you know, say, okay, let me, let me review this. Let me, let me go ahead and give my parental discretion with the counsel of the Holy Spirit. And if, if everything yeah. is, is kosher, you know, we'll have the youngins come in and check it out later. I'll explain it to them in a way that I feel a little more comfortable to them. So mm -hmm. we totally understand that. But like I said, you know, uh, Uncle Zoe is going to try to keep it PG-13 and, uh, <laughs> you know, say, any, say anything obscene or anything like that. You no, know, because sometimes, you know, subject. you know, the word can get, you know, a little racy, especially when it comes to stuff like this. When we're talking about BD, you know, oh. <laughs> 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 you're going to be talking about things like that uh, in this chapter. And, uh, you know, some of the things that uh, people experience, you know, when that when that puberty thing comes around. Uh, you know, or even I guess maybe before period, like you know, you got boys like with their dirty hands, always walking around playing with it all the time. You know, you get diseases and stuff like oh. that. But this is going to be for like you know responsible adults <laughs> and you know people at the age of accountability. You know, even when you do get at that age, you know, you may still have you know you know grown men just walk around playing with it. <laughs> Wash your hands. Oh, <laughs> Twenty seconds. <laughs> anyway, all right. That being said. <laughs> Let's get the counsel of the Holy Spirit to come in here. What? Help me wash my mouth. <laughs> wash your mouth <laughs> with that bronze serpent soap. Make sure you get your bronze serpent soap at Arcadian <laughs> Buffalo. What's up? Okay. All right. Holy Spirit, in Yeshua's name, we welcome you to, to oversee our study. Help us, Lord, to say what's right in your sight and what's wise in your eyes. Help us to bless you. Uh, with this study, Lord, you know, to report of you in a way that's pleasing to you, Father. Yes. Uh, you know, we just, you know, we want to report of who you are. Let folks know that you are the real deal. You are the worthy high priest and king. You are the Lord, period. And uh, so, you know, that being said, you know, we want to, you know, uh, be of good service to you in, uh, in, in the ministry you bless us to have, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we in this fellowship, uh, you know, we want to be in your priesthood. We want to party with you forever. So classmates, you know, the Lord's blessings of fortification, his shalom and his joy to you. And uh, let us be that effective salt, light and fruitful for him. Can you yes. dig it? Yes. Dig it with one of these mugs, you know, these mugs. <laughs> Give a toast to the most high proper. Right on. <laughs> Amen. OK, um, let's do it. Let's read. Um, let's read Leviticus 15, one through three, three verses. And let's get out into outer space, <laughs> right? Three verses, man. Three verses enough to pack that holy hookah deep. Wow. Right? <laughs> Them holy hookah engines is revved up, man. We already <laughs> getting ready to blast off in the deep field. All right? Okay, so let's do it. Let's go. Uh, Adonai spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak to Bnei Yisrael and tell them, when any man has a fluid discharge, ow, from his body. <laughs> uh, because of his discharge, he is unclean. Really? No, um, that, let's see, this is to be his uncleanness in his discharge. Whether his body flows with his discharge or his body obstructs his discharge, double ow, it is his uncleanness. Now, y'all, you understand that everything, you know, pretty everything that we're reading, the whole, the whole book is about Yeshua. It all points to him. Um, so, you know, even in this, we're learning about who Yeshua is. Okay, now, if the Lord can like teach us who he is through a worm, this might not be a good analogy. I, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> okay, but if he can teach who he is through through a worm. 
He can teach us the, who he is through this. Man sees what is what are we, what are we saying to people? What are we always saying to do? You're always thinking with your, you know, you're always saying it. So it's like the Lord knows, like, yeah, uh, unfortunately, because you guys are so focused on that thing, I may even have to teach you who I am even through that. Yes. Yes. Well, right. We do, we do say spread that seed a lot. Is it right? <laughs> As Christians. Cast the seed, you know? <laughs> yes. But now, of course, we're talking about it because like we, when we're talking about that talking kind of about seed, that's, 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 that's between a man and a woman only. That's, that's, you're supposed to be ministering to your wife in that sense. But we are supposed to cast seed. Not that kind, not the seminal seed, but, you know, but it's a great point. It's good that you brought that up because that, sh that is something that you should be distinguished. You want to make sure as you are casting, there's the seed that you cast on the ground, uh, you know, for, for basically growing the garden, for the harvest, right? Get that, mm -hmm. get that harvest growing for the Lord. And then there's the ministry to your wife. That's the only seed that you're supposed to be spreading to her. Spreading to her. So, you know, that's, that's what you want to do as far as that goes. But uh, that's, that's a great point. Um, but in here, okay, so let's, let's break this down. Um, in, even in my clowning around that the Lord is gracious enough to let me, you know, class clown with, um, <laughs> <laughs> it seems pretty vague still is about what this discharge is. I mean, you know, we can pretty much speculate on what it is, but not, not necessarily, right? It's not, it's not exclusive, you know, to that kind of discharge. Um, but the, battle, the bottom line is, is that it's, you know, it's a bodily fluid and it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, anything that oozes from a man's body you know, from snot to semen, uh, is going to be unclean, right? Any discharge of, of, of the respected gender, uh, man or woman, is unclean, okay? Long before, you know, the medical field, you know, figured it out, the Bible has already told us that all body fluids are suspect, okay? Yes. Uh, but since this ordinance is implicating man, uh, it's likely talking about, you know, discharge of the genitalia. Uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's pretty strongly implicated. Doesn't mean it's the only thing, all bodily fluids, suspect. Okay? Yeah. But we're gonna kind of zero in on, it does seem to kind of zero in on this. You know, and that being said, I, I hear y'all snickering out there and stuff like that, because I can hardly help it myself. Okay, so what, if I'm projecting, I don't care, right? <laughs> we all just need to grow up, right? <laughs> and, and conduct ourselves <laughs> like mature adults. <laughs> <laughs> right, as we were told, you know, back in elementary school, which would have been right. like for me, like the latter 70s and in, uh, in the early 80s. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're going to act like mature adults, you know, and we're going to talk about <laughs> penis and, and vagina. It's like, OK. And, and, and I'm just in there almost about to like shoot my brains out of my ears trying to not have a bust out into a full on oh, snicker sure. snicker fest. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Right? But you're already the class clown. Yes. Yes. Add that to the mix. <laughs> so that but that being said, y'all, having, you know, the, the government run school system, you know, teaching sex ed, uh, has contributed really to kids being more confused about oh, sex. Oh totally. All right? So hey uh, you know we're going to talk about it up in here. We're we, we going to make it straight. But I ain't the public school system. I ain't the state. I answer to the word of God. Right. So, you know, this is this is a safe space. <laughs> this is a safe sexual. Actually, we're not really talking so much about sex. Yet. We're talking about, you know, uh, uh, VD, uh, these, these, you know, that, of that nature. Body uh, fluids. Yeah. Body fluids and yeah. stuff like that. Right. That just, you know, maybe happen to be transmitted sexually. Um, actually, now, sex ed, you know, sex is something y'all. Here's the thing where as far as the government uh, assumes to teach us about sex. And like I said, that's turned out marvelous, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, see, here's the thing, um, government, if I may. Um, we're already, uh, we're wired to know how it works. That, that may be a surprise to some people in the government, liberals. Uh, who seem to be obsessed with sex. It's funny how they can be so yes. obsessed with sex, but don't seem to understand or correlate that it's already wired into our instincts. It's just <laughs> something that we already know how to do. Kind of like the same way a beaver just knows how to build a dam. It's just <laughs> something that it knows how to do. It's its instinct, okay? All right, so will people be curious about the physiology concerning sex? Sure, sure. Now, that's as natural as us already having the instinct as to how it works. Because we're naturally curious, we're gonna have the inclination to figure it out. 
all right? It's, there's a drive to figure it out, all right? So now, that being said, y'all, nobody has to be taught the nature of sex. Nobody needs to be taught that, as it is natural for us to already know. The morality concerning sex is a whole nother issue, okay? And schools don't teach that, hmm. right? You got that right. The schools, right? You know, the schools have already perverted sex yeah. by assuming to teach us about something that already comes natural to us, mm -hmm. right? That's a total waste of time, a total waste of money, a total waste of your kid's childhood, yeah. Right. And, and bottom line is, is, I don't know, for some reason, the, 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 you know, these, so a lot of these teachers, they think that it's woke and enlightened to do that. And basically what they're doing is that they're dragging kids into their own emotional issues. Yes. It's really what they're doing is subjecting kids to that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's um, somehow assuming that they're on a kid's level or some in some cases still think that they're a child or something like that and feel like they're they have the right to go ahead and share this with kids and stuff like this. It's pretty sick, actually. Yeah. It's not responsible at all Absolutely. right now to make matters worse um they omitted or flat out left like i said the morality out of it which only doomed the student to confu to confusion right yes. as now kids are being encouraged to assume whatever gender they want right, right? against god's chromosome code <laughs> yes you know what i'm saying Hey, so and so many teachers, y'all, are, 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 are foolish with denial in thinking they are teaching good, woke values. Right. So so people have to be taught. Yes. Good from evil. We, we, mm -hmm. we born with the only the difference between a kid is that a kid just doesn't know that it's doing evil. But you're born selfish right. and right. born to do things that are at odds with God. Amen. She just don't know any better. So you have to be taught. <laughs> yes. you, you can't, I can't stand with people. Oh, everything I learned in kid. I need to know. I learned in kindergarten and we can learn so much from the children. Yeah. Learn what not to do. Right. Right. Children don't learn how to be good moral people on their own. No, they, they're wicked creatures that just don't yeah. know that they're wicked. You have to teach them. Right. Yeah. Sure. They have innocence and they can be cute and cuddly and sweet sometimes and all that sort of stuff. Next thing you know, they're trying to poke some another kid in the eye <laughs> or, or pull their hair and try to take their peanut butter jelly sandwich, all this sort of stuff. You know, it's like, come right. on, you know, they're wicked <laughs> you know, creatures. They have to be taught. All right. So. Coverage is <laughs> lying. Yes. <laughs> Right, we have to be taught that. It, 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 thank you. Right? Did you, did you steal? Did you take those cookies? No. <laughs> Crumbs all over the face and stuff like that. Nope. Right? But with the, the so-called education system, y'all, which is really a system of indoctrination, right? We know mm -hmm. that is a state-sponsored religion of collectivism, teaching students the idea that they're owed and entitled. Oh yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, they want us to excel and 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 uh and all that sort of stuff and be the best you can yeah be the best you can de be at being entitled be the yeah. best you can be to get out there and tell other people that they owe you something that's mm -hmm. what they want you working at right right it's like you know so oh get out there and, and be all you can be and get an education and all that sort of they, they want you to be educated collectivists yeah you know get out there yeah sure work work hard work hard and they think that they're t and and you think that they're teaching you to work hard for the fruits of your labor no mm -hmm. You know, they want you to work hard so somebody else can enjoy your fruits, yep. right? Or that you can, even no matter how hard you work, you're still gonna find that you're gonna feel like you're entitled, yeah, right? Or feel like you're <laughs> entitled to tell other people that they're entitled to what somebody else has. You're gonna be an advocate for that. You're gonna right. be an ally for that, yeah. right? One way or another, they got you. That's true. That's what they do. That's what collectivism is. It's, a, oh my mm -hmm. goodness, y'all, when you get down, we yeah. talk about the Lord, right? The Lord says, hey, this is a, this is a body here, right? Yeah. We, we and even in the Lord, y'all, we work collectively. We're different members right. of one body. The devil masquerades as an angel light because he wants his minions doing the same thing. Mm. There's going to be different parts to this body, right? You're going to have the drones and you're going to have the elites, but they work all together for the same yeah. purpose. Ooh. That's to get what you got. Wow. Right? Entitled, He's covetous. The ultimate impersonator. Right? Prideful, rebellious yeah. against your rights. Yes. You know, talking about their so-called rights while ignoring the balance of freedom. That's what they yes. do. Yes, that'll preach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So all that sort of stuff, y'all. So when we talk about now, keep this in mind, y'all. We talk about this collectivism. We're talking about this, this entitlement. 
uh, the state sponsored religion, like I said, of collectivism, right? That people have to pay their fair share. And justice is when someone else is forced to submit to what your pursuit of satisfaction is, which can never be satisfied. Right. Right. But that's that's what we are. And y'all, because of this entitlement collectivist mentality, this social justice and everybody owes somebody something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, well, actually, uh, uh, I guess it's the white man who owes everything. No, that's like, true. And trust me, there, yeah. there is a body of white people who do owe people. They're called Democrats. <laughs> okay? If you want to take it up with some white folks, <laughs> that's them Democrats. They're the ones who imposed all this stuff. Please don't ever forget that. Yeah. When they try to throw they that stuff at you. I forgotten. I know. They forget it all the time. You know, they say, oh, come on. So we already know that the Democrats were the Klan and we already know that the Democrats were the Confederacy. So we know that. Yeah. It's like it's almost like in martial arts, right? A person, you know, they get ca taught these techniques, taught these techniques. And the second they get into a real fight, all their technique goes out the window. <laughs> and that's what it is, what it's like with a lot of these conservatives. Yeah. Right. They'll, they'll talk about, oh, yeah, we already know that, but they don't really care. That stuff doesn't really matter to them. It really doesn't. They do not. They do not care about why the Republican Party was actually founded. They don't care. Yeah, that's true. Right. They really I don't find that to be true. They'll, they'll, don't brag. It's almost. Hey, and this is this, this is going to sound a little bit anti-Semitic. It's going to be cheap, but it's not because, we, you know, we love our Jewish brothers and sisters. But it's like a Jewish person who brags about being Jewish. They're secular Jews. Right. You got all these Jews right. out who are voting for the Democrat Party. They're just like all these who keep rebelling against God over and over. Right. If you're a Jew and you're a Democrat, you are definitely a rebellion against God. Amen. Okay? Amen. But they like to, and, and as much as they have such loathing for Jews, turning their backs on Israel, backing Palestine, yes. yes. right? It's the same thing. Yep. You know, they just, they just want the title, right, of being mm. Jewish. Wow. You know, it's the same thing with these Republicans. They just want the title. But do they really care what it means? No. Right? No, they don't care what it means at all. So that being said, y'all, um, you know, these they, they go along these narratives and it, and it costs them. You know, it costs them big. You know, but anyway, y'all, before I get I'm, I'm, I'm getting way off out into the woods here. <laughs> you know, it's a good trip, though. All right. <laughs> Let's get back all, uh, into our course in outer space. But, you know, going to outer space, but we go anywhere. All right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, y'all, basically what I'm saying is it gets down to this. Um, when we're talking about being made to submit to their satisfaction, these collectivist ideas and these entitlements and stuff like that, y'all, that's gonna especially translate into sexual issues. Oh yeah. Right? That rape culture, mm -hmm. you know, that Democrats claim to be so abhorred against, you know, uh, 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 abhorred against this culture that they created, they cultivated this culture. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Right, they did it. Everything is sex to them, they're obsessed with sex. Yep. And they, they accuse Christians like Christians are so obsessed with it. No, no, no. Actually, we're, we're, if, if there's any obsession, it's protecting people from being damaged by it. Amen. And you got these, you got, it's weird, man. You got these Democrats out there telling them that they're entitled to go knock to get our information concerning vaccines. It's their duty to do that. But it's not our duty to say, hey, man, you, you might want to, you know, be considered about how you're going about your sexual activity. Yeah. It damages people. Yes. Right. Physically, emotionally, yeah, mentally, spiritually. Say, right. Screws people up. We're not going door to door sending the government out there to tell you. It's like you guys are the ones <laughs> who hold kids as a captive audience. Yes. Trying to wow. teach them about sex, <laughs> you know, which has only gotten them more confused. You guys took that upon yourselves to do that. You go and do going door to door by government sanction to want to do that, imposing your morals, so-called morals on us. Right. But how dare we have a place that you can come to voluntarily? You are preaching it tonight. You know You're what I'm saying? You're bringing it. <laughs> you know, the, the Lord going to bring wow. it. Wow. The Lord's going to bring <laughs> That's it. That's right. Right? Fill my cup, Lord. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what, what, what a double standard that is. Oh, indeed. You know, so what yeah. we, it's because, you know, we don't, we, we don't want people walking around with these discharges. <laughs> right. Okay. You might want to do that. Hey, in, in our free space, you know, with that first right of the First Amendment to practice free religious exercise, you know, in, in our free space, not by government mandate. Yeah. You know, or anything like that. You know, we're not trying to inject anything into anybody. You know, right. and, and, and make them, you know, and be like, well, you know what? You can't get in our plane if you don't have the word of God injected in you. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we don't do that. 
Y'all do that. Yeah. You hypocrites. Yes. You Democrats are a bunch of hypocrites. Amen. You know, so that's you. Anyway, <laughs> so y'all, they, they, they claim to be so abhorrent to this culture that they created. Yeah. You sex crazed freaks. Yep. You know, and don't get me wrong because I, hey, sex is a, is a blast. It's a lot of fun, especially when you do it the way God has outlined it. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm, I'm this anti funny duddy Bible study, baby. You know, downplay <laughs> sex, but we do downplay perversion. Right. Okay? And these Democrats, these godless heathens are perverts. Yes. Right? No means no. You can't be sticking things in us, all right? <laughs> Amen. You know? Uh, anyway. Okay, so, but like I said, y'all, they're always preaching and pushing the doctrine of entitlement. Mm -hmm. When a person commits rape, they did it because they felt entitled, True. right, to what belongs to someone else. That's what Democrats are all about, yeah. right? Whether it's slavery, socialism, or communism, their worldview is being entitled to the fruits of somebody else's labor, Yep. right? The fruits of someone else, that's what they're all about. That's who they've always been. This ain't some new Democrat party. No. Can't stand when conservatives say that. This new radical, they're not radicals and they're not new. They've always been like this. Rebels. The Constitution yep. calls them rebels. The Bible calls them rebels. Yes. Right? I don't know why that's not good enough for these high-profile conservatives out there. It's radicals, radicals. It's like they're not radicals. Right? Not radicals, not even close. Right? You guys heard me explain that before. And if you haven't heard me, get my audio book, A Solid Right <laughs> yeah. Cross. Get that book. Get that culture war coaching. Dang it. Right? So, in their collectivist, you know, worldview, they demand, right, that we collectively submit to their ideals, yeah. right? Collectively submit to their fantasies, assuming different genders, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, this, this, this is spiritual disease, right? Emotional, yeah. mental disease, right? You have to teach someone, y'all, that they're not entitled to other people's things, right? <laughs> that includes not being entitled to other people's gender, right? So now how to conduct yourselves, how to conduct ourselves morally concerning the nature, you know, of, of where of, 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 of all this stuff, y'all, you need the counsel of the Holy Spirit for that. And that's where the word comes in. Right. Not the state. Amen. Okay? This is how we ended up with so much confusion, y'all. And, and yep. this is this is by design. You know, yeah. the devil is just doing his things and he's got minions. Right. So now do parents that all that to say, y'all, do parents have a tendency to be awful teachers uh, concerning the morality of sex, you know, concerning their kids or set an example uh, of, of being uh, of, of the morality of courtship and the sanctity of marriage and stuff like mm. that? Yes. Awful. Right. <laughs> yes. 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 They have a tendency. To be awful teachers, right? Too many, right? I'm not saying not, not all, but too many. Christian obviously. or non-Christian? Both. Both. Well, you know, I mean, those who may call themselves Christian. Yeah. Right. You know, people. You know, got parents that are that are not studied up. They may call themselves Christians, but oh, that's a good point. Yeah, but they but they don't really raise their kids up. You know, right. with, uh, you know, with with the training of the Lord. You know, yeah. they don't they don't disciple their kids. Excellent you know? point. Uh, they have their own ideas of discipline, but they're not disciplined with the instruction of the Lord. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's you know, that's unfortunate. Um, so that being said, y'all, you know, when we're talking about, you know, parents, you know, teaching their kids about, you know, sex and stuff like that. I mean, a whole lot of houses, they, they don't even have a husband and a wife oh, to yeah. even teach an example. You know, of that of that basic <laughs> dynamic, y'all. And and y'all, there's a lot of households that do have a husband and a wife, right? That are just as absent, unfortunately. Yeah. Right? So as they dive into their careers, right? Or into a bottle or a bag of weed, right? Or but all don't three. right. <laughs> <laughs> or but don't dive into the word of God. Yeah. Right? You yeah. know, or or all three. You know, they they just checked out. You can have a husband and wife, same thing. They don't have that God glue. Yeah. Right. To keep them cohesive, you know, and, and not set an example. But it's still the best environment to be in. Amen. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's you know, it's I mean, this is Earth. It's, things aren't going to be perfect here. But the, yeah. the best design for it is to have people be talking about we need fathers. No, you need husbands. Yes. Husbands who show the example of being husband to their wife. That is the best thing that you can do for your kids. Is yeah. it always perfect here? No, it's the, still the best chance that they have. Okay? Yeah. Um, 
So, and then after, after, you know, all that said and done, then, you know, they send their kids off to the godless, you know, to teach them, you know, and then wonder why, you know, our country is becoming a nation of hypersensitive perverts yes. obsessed with being empowered victims. Ooh, right. Empowered victims. Yeah. They seek empowerment by being victims. This is what's being rendered, y'all. Right. What do you think this comes from? You know, so wow. the cost, y'all, of sending kids to college mm -hmm. is nothing compared to what it's really costing our country. All right. And that cost is our soul. So but now I know that doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people since, you know, the soul can't be recorded on a bank statement. You know, yeah. you can go to college. Right. And, and be taught by the godless, you know, you, you, you may get, you may very well get a nice career, but you're definitely going to, you're definitely going to get a crappy country. Yeah. Right? And this is not at all downplaying y'all, not at all downplaying education or college. Not at all. Y'all, I have no objections to, to, uh, college and, and learning a career that you're passionate about, you know, that makes a healthy contribution. What I object to is how populated with perverts <laughs> the education is, mm -hmm. right? That can't teach the subject at hand without mind molesting their students. Amen. That's what I have a problem with. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, instead of people, it's, it, it shouldn't be that people are, are so fixated on pushing their kids into school and pushing their kids into college. It's like, dude, you might want to make sure that you're fighting for the Lord to be there. Yes. Don't send them someplace where the Lord isn't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fight just as much for the Lord to be in school. Yeah. Right? To be to, to be the real principal. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To be the real dean. <laughs> That's what you want. Right? Yep. To be the real superintendent uh, intended of education. That's who you should be fighting, you know, to have in there to make sure that he is at the school yeah. before you send your kids there. You know, like I said, I ain't got no objection with higher learning or, you know, uh, you know, people that the Lord tells us that there are people who are going to be given talents to teach. Mm -hmm. Right. We have talents to do different things, you know, uh, but make sure that this person is has, a, you know, a godly foundation. You know, yeah. don't be you know, you don't want to send these people to these heathens. Look what's happening. Yeah. Right. <laughs> because you send because these the, when you have the godless, y'all, you're going to have people who are ruled by fear. Mm. Yeah. Why do you think we had this shut down so easy? So many yeah. godless people out there, you know, who, who their God is fear. Now we had to shut down. Yep. You see what I'm saying? You know, this is what this is what happens. All right. Um, so, you know, the, the bottom line is, y'all, it's, um, you know, a kid or, or uh, really when it gets down to it, a kid doesn't need uh, any reason at all, like to become a pervert. All right. I mean, sometimes we talk about, you know, maybe. Uh, you know, that's how we were raised and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I mean, that does a lot of influences played into it. a lot of people have capitalized on the influence. They're capitalizing on what people's natural inclinations are. Right. And but because we have people who, who are exacerbating this, you know, we have we end up, you know, with a generation that's obsessed with being victims. It's yeah. that's a perversion in itself. You yeah. see you see victim a reason to be a victim in anything, right? It, it doesn't matter. Anything can offend you, you know? It, you can see it as, as a symbol of oppression from statues mm. to freaking cereal, syrup. Yes. Right? This is a perversion itself. It is. When you're just looking at something and you can't just accept it for what it is and you have to twist what it is to make it something oppressive to you. Yeah. Right? That's a perversion. It's yeah. almost like these people get off and it's like a fetish. Oh, that's right? so true. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, but like I said, people are easily given over to being reprobates, right? We're, we're all sinners, y'all, yeah. right? Some people, unfortunately, can just be fully consumed by it, right? Now, the devil himself, he had no excuse, no excuse whatsoever to be a rebel. Nobody influenced him. You see my point, hmm. right? Yeah. Sometimes people are just wicked. I can't yeah, just blame anything. Sometimes people are just wicked people. They just huh. give over wickedness. Like I said, the devil, nobody influenced him. Right. He wasn't molested. Right. right? Or bullied or subject to any wrongdoing or injustice. 
He's just a victim of his own pride, right? Yeah. Like so many people, you know, today. But here's the thing. Even though there are people who are going to do wicked things, even though they weren't influenced to do it, we still have to have this Holy Spirit led instruction with the word of God to know how to respond. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, it's it, because if you don't respond right, it just it really spirals downward. It really gets worse. <laughs> yeah. This is earth. This ain't heaven. We're gonna have imperfections here. Some people are just gonna be given over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. You know, but if you don't know how to respond to it, you know, if if you give yourself to the Holy Spirit rather than giving over to sin, at least we have a shot of preserving some sanity in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. And all that to say, y'all, when you leave it to the godless to educate about sex. We get really big problems, <laughs> yeah, right? Huge. You know, you know what I'm saying. So, you know, then this leads to you know discharges, right? Uh, so, y'all base base your insight on the word of God. Pursue education on these things, of course, right? Learn the expertise, yes, but build it on the word of God, so you don't be a perverted expert, all right? right. Like Dr. Fauci. Right. Yeah. His approach to what he's educated in is a perversion that has cost our country greatly. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you know, when it's talking about things like this discharge, right, it's, it's kind of hard to say that. I don't want to. I don't never want to visit a free clinic. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Which at this point can be, like I say, anything from snot to, to semen. So, so again, I recommend that the pursuit of a, of a degree in medical science is built on a solid foundation of what the Lord has already said, like avoiding exposure to somebody else's body fluids yep. and be mindful not to expose others. Be practical because that's where the, 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 the collective, the lefties be like, well, that's what we're trying to do. Da, 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 da. You're not being practical <laughs> about it at all. Your so-called solutions are worse yeah. than, than, than the disease. Quarantining the healthy. Right. Where people are it's like, hey, if COVID doesn't kill them, suicide will. Right. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. You know, so at any rate, be practical about these things. Um, so be mindful of how things can be transmitted. You see, you know, but because Democrats want to keep people as drones, mm -hmm. they do keep people. It's like, dude, let people exercise some common sense, you know, and uh, and, and st stop keeping them, you know, in, in, in this arrested development. You know, the word of God, if you if you would get out of the way and let people see this, you would see that people the Lord builds. Right. Let's let's understand this. And I'm going to remind folks again. Reading the Bible is not about reading a book of morals or courtesy or, or, or how to be a good person or anything like that. that's not what it is. The book is to teach you who Jesus is, yeah. who he's always been. As you learn who Jesus is, he's building the morality in you. Yeah. You learn that you were made in the image of God. Yes. And then as you understand that we are brothers and sisters in the kingdom, and we are ruled by love and you want to honor the Lord and show your appreciation to him, mm -hmm. you will do things like wash your hands right. before you go touching other people or, 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 or touching their food or, or you'll be mindful of your space if you have to, uh, of other people's space when you sneeze or when you cough and stuff right. like that without having to put on a flipping mask and all that sort of stuff. Right. If you feel like you've got some symptoms or something like that, you may be like, hey, maybe I shouldn't go out today. Yeah. You know, you, you'll do things like that. Uh, uh, maybe if you can't put it off, you'll be mindful if you got to go to the store. You'll right. have your little, you know, a spray bottle of alcohol or something like that. If you touch some stuff, you just get a little spray or something like that. We don't yep. need a state to tell us to exactly. do things like that. Yeah. You'll be mindful because you have the Lord, the love of the Lord. Yeah. You have this sense of respect. The Lord builds that in you. Oh, sure. That's yeah. what, from there. Good words. Yes. Because if you try to do everything, you know, and try to be because you think that you're a good person and all that. So that's why these people out there wearing these face masks and stuff like that. And, and telling people that, oh, good people get vaccinated because of mm -hmm. their ideas of righteousness and goodness. Look what they're doing. That's what happens. We get all these encroachments on our rights because these people think that they're being good people.
Yeah. While they're screwing people, the word of God doesn't, doesn't teach you that. As you learn Jesus, he puts that common sense compassion in you. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You get that common sense compassion. These people ain't got no common sense compassion. Mm. Self-righteous, sanctimonious Pharisees is what these people are. Yes, yes. Right? In the word of God, you don't do that. You're practical about your compassion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So The Pharisaical Fauci. <laughs> right? Exactly. Right. The pharisaical, pharisaical Fauci of the pharmaceutical country. That's, that's the <laughs> company. That's who he is. Triple P. Right. Well, I mean, he spells his name with an F, but hey, P.H. Fauci. Yeah. <laughs> P.H. Fauci. <laughs> P.H. Fauci. Right. It makes sense with a Ph.D. Fauci. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, y'all, when you have the word of God, you can be mindful, yes. you know, of, of, of how these things, you know, are transmitted. You know, the, the word of God is, it's already talked about, it talks about, you know, uh, sp it, it understands these things, you know, how these things are to be transferred. You'll be mindful of it, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be mindful of things being air, airborne, droplet born, blood born, right? People tend to spit or sneeze, you know, or emit droplet born germs when they cough, right? The word talks about this. Yeah. You know, so now, or it could just be simply that this dude is oozing <laughs> with a mean case of ED, right? So be very socially distant. The dude that the Bible is speaking of? You mean the discharged person? It's, it could very well be, right? <laughs> it's, like I said, it's most like that's what's being implicated here. But, you know, once again, all bodily fluids, right? You don't want to be yeah. coming in contact with those, yeah. right? Now, when it's talking about uh, the flow of this discharge, and thank you guys for bearing with me as, as I kind of go off here and go off there. Just, I, got, I got the stick, man. It's, 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 we blast off in outer space. <laughs> right? Going, you know, from, from all over the place. All right. So anyway, this, uh, now when it's talking about this, this flow of discharge being blocked, how? <laughs> all right. That sounds painful. That's F. Ouchie. Okay. <laughs> P.H. Ouchie. <clears throat> it's probably, you know, Probably because he's got a gunked up gherkin, <laughs> right? Oh. Right, and it really needs to be dipped in some peroxide or something, I guess. And can, can you see that? I mean, it's like he dips his junk into a you know a, a bowl oh. of peroxide and bubbles up like a flipping cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, let's let's get let's let's be serious. <laughs> now, the most offensive thing, y'all, and unclean thing that you can be to God. Is dead. All right? Okay, yes. The dead are way outside of the image of God, right? God is life. He's not death, right? In the person of Yeshua, God declares that he is life, right? He is the God of the living and not the dead, right? And as the God of those who have died, with faith in him, according to who he says he is, are alive with him, all right? Yes. So when we read about these discharges, the word for discharge is zub, all right? And it means, it means to flow or gush, okay? okay. So just, you know, I don't want you guys to think, I was like, dude, where did that come from? You're talking, all of a sudden you went from, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, people can die from, I don't know, from like AIDS. I mean, <laughs> definitely, well, you know, well, AIDS is fashionable now. You can get AIDS. People like try to get AIDS on purpose now because it's a cool thing to do. Uh, bug parties, serious, it's a real thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so how, but, yo, how do we go from that to, 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 to death? Right? So just bear with me, right? <laughs> right? So anyway, when we talk about this discharge, right, the word for discharge is going to be zub, and it, it means to, to flow uh, or, or gush. And we understand that this flow or gush is unclean, right? Um, and we understand that death is unclean to God as well. When Yeshua died on the cross, in that moment, he was not in the image of God. God doesn't die. You can't be dead oh. in God's image. All right. Which means that the discharge of fluid that gushed from the son of man, mm -hmm. talking about Yeshua, since this section of the chapter is directed towards men, 
was totally unclean to God because it was fluid gushing out of a dead man, Hmm. right? It was fluid from the death affirming wound, bodily discharge from a dead body. That's doubly unclean to God. Yeah. All right. But that uncleanness was necessary to clean us. Amen. Right. Right. Thank you, Jesus. That's what our high priest, king and Lord took on yes. for us. And Lord. Right. Yeshua. God in the flesh. Yes. Let's not get it twisted. Yes. I don't, I don't want to say anything that makes anybody think that God and Jesus are these two different things. Right. No. Jesus is God in the flesh, all right? So let's clarify. Jesus dying for our sins is godly, all right? Jesus dying for our sins is godly because that's who he is, Mm -hmm. God, right? Him having the kind of love for us to, to, the, the kind of love for us to take our sins to the cross is godly. Right. But him being dead is not godly. All right. Yes. Jesus being dead so that we can have eternal life, though. With him. Yeah. Is totally godly. Yeah. Because that's who he is. All right. So he who is certainly alive again. Right. Can I get a man? Amen. All right. So now I don't know about y'all. Just on a side note, I don't know about y'all, but I find it way more exciting and satisfying learning that Jesus is God rather than listening to some so-called pastor trying to puff me up and tell me that I am a God. Yes, right? you, <laughs> you know? can get an amen for that too. <laughs> right, or, or, or little God, you yeah. know, we little gods, right. you know, or that I'm a prophet or I'm an apostle or, or, or puff me up with expectations of my season and my power, right? right. The real jam. Is learning about who this Jesus is. Yes, it is. Right? Yeah. And I don't want to dilute the lesson by trying to make it about me. Amen. All right, or about you or anybody else like <laughs> yeah. that. The real blessing to each other is learning about him. Yes. Right? Yes, it is. The real medicine to our bones, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Yay, Jesus, tell me more about my season and my strength and my this and my that, right? And me, me, me. Me, me, me. <laughs> right? now, do I want to be fruitful? Heck yeah. Yeah. Of course I do. Of course you do. Right. The Lord himself has told us to. Mm-hmm. Right? But what really motivates me. Right. And I probably I reckon you, too, is learning about the one who issued the directive. Yeah. All right. So now, anyway, y'all, let's let's read Leviticus uh, four through eight. Let's see. Where are you at for? Uh, OK. Every bed on which he who has the discharge lies will become unclean. And everything he sits on will be unclean. Whoever touches his bed is to wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Whoever sits on anything on which the man who has the discharge sat is to wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Make sure it's water. You don't want to bathe yourself in anything else. Water <laughs> seems like the logical choice. <laughs> okay. And be unclean until the evening. Whoever touches the body of the one who has the discharge to wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. It's like God has to kind of, you know, let us know. Yeah, do it with water. Because the next time when I come to bring this cleansing, cleansing it's going to be by fire. So enjoy that water bath while you can. Mm. Right? Uh, let's see. And then to eight. Uh, or if the one who has the discharge spits on someone who is unclean, there's going to be a fight. <laughs> um, when he also is to wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. All right. So, you know, somebody slaps you, you know, you turn the other cheek. Somebody spits on you. I don't know. Is there anything? <laughs> is there no. All right. You know, there's, there doesn't seem to be a statue. Somebody spitting on me. Can I, can I, can I, can I hit? Can I, can I kick? <laughs> all right. Anyway. All right. So um, where was we at? All right. Every bed in which this person 
lies in. Man, how many beds does this person lie in to make this an issue? Because <laughs> like, you're just going around lying in different too. people's beds. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of a weird thing to say, right? Yeah. Now, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna you know front here and act like I'm I'm some expert in this you know I guess communal culture that they may have that would render such a concern, but <laughs> apparently it did warrant enough concern uh, that there had to be a statute on it, <laughs> all right, all right, and Yeshua. Is, is, in, is invoking that statute, right? Okay, just, it, it, it seems like strange, right? It does seem like a strange thing. Y'all, like I said, the Lord orchestrates these things. He says these things because he wants people to reflect. He says, that was you, wasn't it? That was you. You made that law. Remember, Jesus, I'm God, man. I'm the one talking to Moses, all right? I put these laws so you guys will recognize when I show up, okay? So, Yeshua is invoking this statute. Let's talk about this person, you know, lying down on things. Like, you, you can't touch nothing this person touched, right? Lying and lying your head down. Okay, so anyway, Jesus told one of the scribes that was talking about, hey man, Jesus, I'll follow you anywhere, right? A scribe would have totally been able to pick up on this or definitely should have been able to pick up on it. I think he did. You know, it doesn't really say, but he might have. Right. The Hebrew word used for bed here is a uh, mishkab and it's more it's not it, it's not really a bed. It's more pertaining about where you lie down. It's a place you lie down to rest. Right. It could be a couch and it's just, but it's basically okay. some place that you just, you know, lie down. It's a lot. It's the act of lying down is really what it comes down to. Right. Yeshua wasn't saying, oh, woe is me. I have no place to lay my head and I wouldn't want you to have to endure not having a place to lie down either. His, his, his disciples, you know, endured some pretty awful stuff. I don't think, you know, yeah. you know, uh, having to rough it laying down was going to be too much of a thing here. Right. Yeshua was saying, I have no place to lay my head so that the scribe would pick up on the law concerning places made unclean to lie down by the unclean person lying down there. Right. So, again, it's just it's practical, y'all, to have protocols concerning the exposure of bodily discharges. Yes. And Yeshua was the one giving the statutes concerning that to Moses and Aaron. And Yeshua basically gave the scribe a nod, letting him know that you have seen correctly who I am and who to follow which means that you know that there is no place for me to lay my head among y'all because keeping with the law concerning my ordinances of exposure and conduct, y'all ain't doing it, <laughs> right? Yeah. I noticed that a lot, you know, a lot of people got diseases around here, <laughs> right? I reckon some of these diseases are of a, a sexual nature too. I notice I'm having to spend a lot of my time healing people, <laughs> right? I know that you guys are going around touching things. Where am I going to lay my head? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's all unclean, right? Yes. So Jesus is invoking his law, reminding them, yeah, that was me. That's me. I'm God, right? Yeah. I was the one giving these ordinances to Moses and Aaron, all right? So let's see. Now, keeping the law concerning my ordinances and, um, you know, when he's reminding them of these things, y'all, it's evident He's showing them that it's evident that they're not keeping his law, right? And exposing other things and people to their junk germs, right? He's basically saying, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> laying around you people. The <laughs> son of man has no place to lay his head. And the scribe may very well have been like, I see what you did there, man. I'm picking up on what you're putting down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then it says everything he sits on, right? The word Kelly is going to be used for the word everything, which means um, a, a vessel, right? Kelly is, uh, there's di different things baked into its meaning. And one of those uh, meanings um, is a vessel, right? And we understand that Yeshua is the human vessel, excuse me, is the human vessel of God. It also means weapon. Yeshua mm. is the weapon of God against death, right? Mm. 
And where Kelly comes from the word kala, which means it is finished. Hmm. All right. So remember that. Uh, now, add this word, um, add that to the word for sits. And okay, we don't be adding stuff in here. I'm just saying, just put these things together. We're just, we're building, we're making the stack here, right? Yeah. We're going to add that to the word for sits. As it is, it says, everything he sits on, right? The word for sits is al, all right? And this word is, it's used for sitting, but it doesn't really mean sitting, all right? It, it means a lot of things, actually, but sitting isn't, doesn't really seem to be hmm. one of them. The, the word used for sitting or al includes in its meaning uh, words like above. I mean, I guess you could sit above something, but like yeah. I said, in its meaning, it doesn't really mean sitting, right? It just, it has these positions, right? Like above, or it means besieged. Uh, it means conquered. Mm -hmm. uh, it means reason, right? Interestingly enough, you know, the word who's with God, the word in the Greek, it means the logic, the reason, right? Yeah. So, you know, you can do the math here, right? Now, the word that seems to be typically used for sitting uh, is, is yashab. That's more of a word that's typically used in Hebrew for, for sitting. But rather than use the word yashab, that seems to be the word for, for sitting, uh, it, it uses the word al, which, like I said, means more, it's like above, something right you, if you conquer something you're above something you know yeah. you see something you become you've taken a um position over it right you've, you've uh you're superior now um the word al is uh is used in the second verse right it's used twice the word al is used twice in in the second verse of of genesis and it's used to tell us where the darkness was and where God was, right? Darkness was over Al, right? Oh, wow. The word for sitting, yeah. right? That doesn't really mean sitting. God was, <laughs> you know, God was hovering, right? Yeah. Maybe he was hovering, sitting, Indian style. I don't know, right? <laughs> but it tells us that darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was over the face of the waters. Right. The darkness was over the face of the deep because God put it there. All right. Because he is hovering over the earth in conquest, in the aftermath of his judgment upon the earth. Right. Now, I know this doesn't sit well with the creationists who believe that the earth is only about six thousand years old. Right. And that the universe and the earth were created in, in, in one day, right? Now, that's not what the Bible says. Mankind is about 6,000 years old, starting with Adam. Yes, but the earth was here long before that, right? There were kingdoms of angels that ruled here for a long time. Lucifer himself had kingdoms here. He became very corrupt and violent with his trade and trafficking and angels following his rebellious practice defiled the earth. Basically made everything unclean with their perversion. I think it's safe to say that there were lots of discharges <laughs> and everything that you would touch would make you unclean. Ezekiel 28, 12, you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every kind of precious stone adorned you, ruby, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald. Your mountings and settings were crafted in gold, prepared on the day of your creation. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for I, had ordained you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fiery stones from the day you were created. You were blameless in your ways until wickedness was found in you. By the vastness of your trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mountain of God and I banished you, O guardian cherub. He's not talking about King Tyre. Just want to just want to reiterate that I banish you, O guardian chair from the fiery stones. Your heart grew proud 
of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I cast you to the earth. I made you a spectacle before kings. Okay. Like I said, God is not talking about the king of Tyre. He's warning the king of Tyre that if I can do this to Lucifer, who was more powerful, a more powerful king on the earth than you, then dispatching of you will be no problem at all. <laughs> right? So we just read, y'all, that the earth already was here, right? And it had kingdoms. I mean, just spectacle for kings. Adam wasn't even created yet. Yeah. Okay? There were no kingdoms except for the angels that were here, right? Remember, y'all, the word hamalakim, the word for angel, it's one of the words for angels in, in, in the Hebrew, hamalakim, including in its meaning, is king, mm -hmm. right? So kings, so angels have royal titles. They were here, right? They went full blown pervert, right? Not all of them, right? Yeah. But too, too many of them. They went full on pervert, right? And God cast a judgment over everything that they defiled. All right. The very word for water that is used uh, in this judgment, when we're talking about the, 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 uh, the, the water that was covering the earth, right? That God was hovering over, right? The word for that is ma'im. And it actually means waste, right? How can there be waste if there was nothing here before? to make waste, right? Right. Also included in the word ma'im is urine and semen. And aren't we talking about discharges here? Yeah. Right? And, 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 and if there's this semen, y'all, this, you can, you can imagine there was probably a lot of unholy sex going on, right? Yeah. This stuff spreads disease and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff, right? Now, the, the people said, well, they, they were angels, right? They, they were, they, they're, they're spiritual beings, yes, who can engage in carnal activity. Right. But there were also natural things here, too. Right. And that's that's a whole nother story, too, because obviously if, if the world if the world was cast into judgment and everything drowned, obviously there was living things here like flesh and bone. Right. Not humans, but there was something else here. Yeah. Right. So and it had become totally defiled. The angels were presiding over these things. All right. So um, now this discharge like I said, these, these discharge of a lot of unclean activity going on in the world, right? This is and Genesis verses one through three. Right? That's right. Yeah. Right. The description of right off the first the void. Exactly. But you have this supposition of who God says he is. I'm the one who created the heavens and the earth. Right. Yeah. And then right in there, y'all, you can't, once you have that, your responsibility is to say, okay, um, all right. I guess I better keep reading and not rely on your own understanding to fill in the blanks. Yes. Right. You don't fill in. You don't do that. You've got to get you've got to read enough of the word to realize that, OK, there's this Holy Spirit. Right. Um, well, if there's a Holy Spirit, because people will assume it's kind of in our inclination to want to commune with spirits. You might want to commune with that one. Mm. All right. Um, OK. Um, I'm not going to get a Ouija board or anything like that, but I, I, if, if this is a spirit, I, I want to know you. Yeah. Help me understand this. Yes. Right. And then from there, start reading. And then those blanks get filled in. You don't need to go to the Apocrypha. You don't need to go to rabbinical writings. You don't need to go Thank to these you. extra biblical yes. texts or anything like that to fill in the blanks. The Bible, the sufficient word of God will tell you what you need to know. Yes. Right. And this ain't about trying to square the Bible up with 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 uh, uh, man made science or his scientific method or anything like that. No, the Bible is already standard. Right. Yes. It's, it's like Newton says, no, it's science. You're going to realize that God's the real deal. Yep. Okay, so this isn't me trying to, to capitulate to science or anything like that or try to make it fit in, in some timetable that makes it rational for human understanding. No, you ain't got to do that. Right. The Bible already tells you the earth was here for a long time. Man. Right. I ain't there's, there's no budging as far as that goes. Man, creation of man from Adam to now, about 6,000 years. There's no budging from that. The restoration of the earth. Right? The rest. But when we're talking about the restoration of the earth and the earth that was here before God said, let there be light after his judgment of the earth, because it was already here, it went wicked and he judged it. He judged what was going on here. Right? Who knows how long the earth was here before that? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Right? Anyway, but I, I imagine it was probably here 
billions of years, billions, right? Now, the reason why we can speculate that is because we know that there are stars really, really far away. Yeah. And the light, the time that it takes for those lights from those stars to get here are light years. And I'm yeah. talking like millions of light years. So when you do the math on how far, you know, some light can travel in a year of, of, of that magnitude, it's a long time. And it's way longer than 6,000 years. All right. The Lord already told us that these these celestial bodies that he's going to put there serve as signs. They serve as indicators. Right. Yeah. They serve they're, 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 they're timetables. So. It's logical that God's like saying, yeah, if you determine the stars, it gives you an indication, gives you a sign of how long at least the universe has been here. Right. Which is barely even a blink to how long I've been here. Yeah. Right. That's that's God really kicking down the glory right there. It's like you really want to see some glory. You want to see some. If you think you know, the glory isn't in assuming that the universe is only about six thousand years old. God wants you to know that the universe has been here for a long flipping time, yeah. a really long time. And when you get that through your head, when you're able to realize that the universe has been here billions and billions of years and you understand that that is just a that's not even a blip on how long God has been here, right? It's, it's, it, oh, God only created the world in the universe in, in six days. What well, was he in a hurry? God's got all of eternity, he can wait. The word says that God laid the foundations of the universe. Mm. The universe formed, he, he, he outlined the ordinance of nature for the universe to run its course and develop. God has time, yeah. all right? It's been here for a while. All right. So anyway, y'all, um, let's see. So the Lord, y'all, in these opening pages, he cast judgment on the earth and imprisoned the whole world in darkness. That darkness was over the surface of the deep. Just like it says in Genesis, the word for deep used, the word for deep uh, that was used uh, is to whom. And it comes from the word whom, which means defeated in battle, hmm. right? And, and to roar, all right? So now, who, who was here to defeat in battle if there was nothing here, right. right? There was something here. The world was already here. And there was that much evil that had grown with the rebellious angels and their ventures, right? Lucifer led a war against God. He and his angels were defeated in battle. When Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, right? For Christians out there or people who are Christians, you think that you're not gonna have trouble because, oh, you're Christian now and I'm gonna have my experience and all that sort of stuff. No, the Lord yeah. just told you, you will have trouble in this world, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I'm going someplace with this, <laughs> right? We we gonna we gonna we gonna break down VD up in here. We gonna get there. <laughs> we are gonna come to the understanding. Oh goody! In the deep dive into the venereal vast of vastness of the vast. Okay. Um. Now, when, it, when, when he says, take heart, I have overcome the world, y'all, this isn't just something he, he wanted them to, uh, to, to think positive about, right? Hey, buck up there, <laughs> think, think positive. I've overcome the world, right? And, 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 and he wants, or he wants him to think about things to come as they already are. You know, you gotta think about it. You gotta think through it and, and, and think it as if it's already happened. Right. He's, that's not exactly what he's doing. <laughs> he wants them to have faith. Yes. But he also said that to remind them that he's done it before. Jesus tends to do that. Mm, yes. Right. If, if I tell you something, that's because I can back it up. Yeah. Right. I, I, I've done it before. Right. The very first paragraph of Genesis is God's conquest. Right. Mm -hmm. And his power over all the universe. The yeah. very first page, he overcame the world. Yeah. That's why Jesus is like, take heart, man, I've overcome the world. 
right? This isn't something that you can just look forward to and think about it as if it's already happened. Like with faith, no, you, I'm giving you the straight up knowledge. Yeah. It's like you can have confidence in this because I've done it before, all right? So, and in his mercy, he gives his creation another shot, right? So what's the word for, for deep again? The deep is to whom? From the word whom, meaning defeated in battle and roar. This is going to happen again. The Lord had judged the world twice by water. The second time he made a Noahic covenant, right? The next time when God makes a global judgment, he's not bringing water. He's bringing the heat, yeah. right? And it's going to radiate throughout the universe. The cosmos is going to get flash pasteurized, right? Second Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be dissolved, burning with heat, and the earth and the works in it mm. will not be found, right? It's gonna nuke the whole universe, melt it down to the elemental level where even the atoms will not be stable, right? It's the power of God, y'all. Mm. So the universe is gonna get annihilated with a great roar, just as the earth was annihilated with a great roar when it was judged by water in the first paragraph of Genesis. The word let us know that God has overcome the world and has authority to judge it. He's done it before. We should take a warning from that, right? The rebellious angels defiled the earth. Their behavior was fully unclean. They made the earth a place where God had no place to lay his head, right? So he gave it a bath in his wrath, right? Then he made a garden afterwards, you know, yeah. <laughs> so he could kick it on the earth again, right? So when it talks about all that to say, y'all, when it talks about touching the bed, it's a weird thing to say, right? Yeah. Do you go to people's house? I don't know about you. Do you go into people's house and, and, find, and go and touch their bed? I don't know, yeah. right? Right? But <laughs> coming into uh, uh, into contact with other people's bed, y'all, seems to warrant a concern here, right? But we have learned that when we come across strange things like this, the Lord wants us to really lean on them for some understanding. Mm, okay? Yeah. A key thing to understand is that God arranged it to where the Hebrew and Greek language, he arranged it, y'all, <clears throat> for them to have a lot of metadata baked into their words, right? It's not like English, y'all, like, you know, when you, when you want to define, like, water, right, you get a definition, like, according to Miriam, you know, Webster, uh, the liquid that descends from the clouds as, as rain or uh, from streams, lakes, and seas. I mean, that doesn't really, really tell you what water is, yeah. but you know it's something pertaining to water, yeah. right? We're not adding, like, different words here or anything like that, that water could mean this and could mean that, you know, but it's still pertinent. It's the other thing about it. It's going to have all the, the Hebrew's going to have all these words in it, but it's still pertinent somehow. Right. Mm -hmm. And these words can be used in, in and the context will shape how these words are used. Right. But it still fits. You know, it's God is masterful like that. Right. Yeah. So but when you, we get this definition of water uh, and seas and, and it is a major constituent of all living matter. This is what uh, Miriam Webster is saying. Uh, and that when pure is odorless, tasteless, very slightly compressible, you know, a uh, uh, liquid oxide of hydrogen. Right. And. There's, and there's nothing really else baked in there, right? Nothing else that's, you know, added to what water is, you know, and it's trying to give you a description of what water is. Did it really define what water is? Uh, right? Um, but like I said, it's still pertaining to water. Uh, the definition is pretty focused on water. But in Hebrew, a word for water like ma'im isn't going to just mean water, right? It's going to have a lot of implications baked into it, right? It's like, it's like God's own SEO metadata that helps you to search him. Huh. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? He uses a lot of key words and a lot of tags to point to him. That's a good way of describing it. Right? Right? God was keywording and hashtagging long before Twitter and Google. Yeah. Right? To point to who he would come to us as. Yeah. All right? So with reading God's word, you don't just read the words. You have to explore the words metadata to see how it directs you to Yeshua, right? Now I said earlier, the word for touch, like when we're touching beds or you came into contact and you touch these things, the word for touch, once again, it doesn't just mean touch. You gotta look at the metadata, right? The Lord's got SEOs in there that point to them, right? We've seen that, you know, we've seen that a lot, you know, in our journey, you know, through the scriptures, right? And God gave us a couple more examples, like the word for touch is, is, uh, is naga, and it means to strike, right? Mm. Smite is when we talk about these touching, right? And uh, we know that Jesus was struck a lot, right? Talks yeah. a lot about him being struck, smote, right? <laughs> and again, the word for bed is mishkab, meaning to lie down. So when we look at John 10, 17, 18 through 18, the reason the Father loves me is that I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This charge I received from my Father, right? What does Mishkab mean? It doesn't just mean bed. It's to lie down, to yeah. lay down. Right. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10, 15. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. These are important instructions, y'all, to protect people from exposure, of course. But the real instruction is for them to recognize the redeemer when they're exposed to him. Mm, yeah. Right. Within these statutes is the code to recognize the visitation from God in the person of Yeshua and what he's going to do and what's going to happen to him. Mm -hmm. And though God's code leaves um, no excuse for them to not recognize him, there will be no excuse to torture and kill him either, right? But the code still says that they will, yeah. right? God just knows how this is going to play out. They're not going to have any excuse to do it, but they're going to do it, right? Yeah. Now, here's the thing. These rules aren't exactly, they're not exactly impossible to follow, but they're difficult to uphold, all right? There's, it's, it, they're not unreasonable rules, y'all. And, and even though the Israelites had no excuse to uphold them, they just didn't, right? And y'all, it could be any of us, right? Yeah. It could be any of us. Y'all, it ain't like they really want to deal with the awkward moment of saying, um, hey, you, you, you don't want to sit there, bro. I've, I've got some ooze <laughs> from my junk. It's like, oi, 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 vey. I don't want to sit there, right? It's, that's awkward. Yeah. You, 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 you want to go there? It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you know, I don't want to tell somebody that I've got some, you know, from, from seepage from my anus, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, you don't want to sit there, bro. You know, hey, don't touch that, man. It's the, I, I got, I got, I got the drainage. I got, I got the, the drainage. I got the, what are they, the discharge. The discharge, yeah. <laughs> right? It's awkward. You know, a lot of people are going to be like, eh, mm -hmm. what they don't know won't hurt them. Eh. Didn't really seem to be turning out too good, right? No. So, thus people, and, and, and is this plausible? Totally. Right. I'm not saying something that's way out of field out here. You know, not at all. So thus people uh, to be when they do this, y'all, because they're figuring, hey, what they don't know won't hurt them. What happens? What happens? It causes people to be unclean yeah. without them knowing. Yeah. Right. You've come into contact with unclean things. You weren't informed. You don't know. And right. you're walking around unclean. Right. So that amounts to sins that you're unaware of, right? You don't know that you've committed. Yeah. That's, that's things like that happen, right? You're not aware of it. You don't, you're not aware that you committed of these things. And, or you don't recognize something as a sin, 
Or like, it's like, what, say for instance, like I said, it's like, ah, oh, come on, what's the big deal? But they don't know I won't hurt them. Did I really sin? I mean, you know, it just wasn't, no big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So you have people who don't know that they've been exposed to something and have become unclean, and you have those who are like, eh, it's, it's not really a sin, is it? It's not a <laughs> big deal, okay? So that's, that's what the Lord gave Moses, that statute concerning offerings for unintended sins, right? Yeah. Those sins that you're not aware of, that you committed, right. right? There's laws concerning that, right? Jesus was the one talking to Moses, giving those laws. So this is important, y'all, because like I said, we're talking about you going around touching these things, right? And obviously there's going to be people who are going to be like, they're not going to inform people, mm -hmm. right? And then you have people who sin, didn't know that they, who are, who are walking around unclean, yeah. right? Or people who don't really recognize what they did as a sin. So when you have Jesus saying, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, that's not just Jesus being a nice guy, Okay. right? He was invoking the law that he gave Moses. Leviticus, 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 <laughs> speaking in tongues, man. Got me really preaching. I don't preach. I just get passionate about my study with my classmates. That's all. That's right. Leviticus. Bo. <laughs> you go. Thank you. All right. He's invoking the law that he gave Moses. All right. So all the way to the death on the cross, Jesus was declaring who he's always hmm. been. Okay. Wow. Unclean until evening. So we read that. What's up with that? It's yeah. Unclean until evening. What's so special about the evening? That makes a person all of a sudden clean. <laughs> why, why is that in there? Okay. So it's the Lord giving clues again to recognize him. Like when he would be healing the unclean. Right? Matthew 8, 16. When evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him. Hmm. And he drove out the spirits, and these spirits are unclean, right? With a word and healed all the sick. A demon is an unclean spirit. Yeah. A person possessed by them is made unclean. When Yeshua welcomed them in the evening, they were made clean, hmm. right? Mark 1, 32. That evening, after sunset, people brought to Jesus all who were sick and demon possessed. Luke 4, 40. At sunset... All who were ill with various diseases were brought to Jesus and laying his hand on each one, he healed them. When the evening came for the people that day, right, they were no longer unclean. Interesting. Thanks to Jesus. In Leviticus 14, it's giving us the heads up. The one who healed the unclean when the evening came. Yeah. Right. So what about this one? When some, you know, sending a clean person to go take a bath. Sending a clean person to go take a bath after they've been spit on by the unclean. What's up with that, right? Yeah. So this is pointing to what would become a very well-known account, right? Jesus, y'all, was considered an unclean, blasphemous heretic by the Sanhedrin. Yeah and perform miracles huh. by the power of the most unclean of spirits, Beelzebub, also known as the devil, right? There was a blind beggar who wasn't unclean, right? And Yeshua testified that his parents did not conceive him in sin and didn't have a sinful lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the one perceived to be the blasphemous heretic, empowered by unclean spirits, put his spit mm. and mud just to make it extra dirty, Yeah, right? In a man's eye and told him to go wash, right? So rather than recognizing the heads up that the Lord gave them about this to recognize him from Leviticus 15, they insist he is not of God. Mm. Right. based on their misunderstanding of the Sabbath <sighs> and throw the formerly blind man out of the synagogue, Yeah. right? So 
Y'all thought, you know, what you guys do? Like, <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about VD. What does VD have to do with Jesus, man? Oh, my. <laughs> you know the Lord's going to make it fit. You know, <laughs> some people out there, you know, maybe, maybe you know, I don't know. I, I guess Biting I'm their nails. You know, worried that, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, we, we only, we, we, we just want, we will do these studies. Y'all. We always pray that, you know, we're doing what pleases the Lord and, yes. you know, Lord have mercy on us if we're, if we're out of school or anything like that. But uh, I hope that what we have shared makes sense. Uh, we hope that you detect the truth in it. Uh, and of course, <laughs> study <laughs> for, yeah. for yourself, uh, double check everything. Uh, if I did, if I wasn't uh, confident in the Lord, I wouldn't share it. Uh, but uh, it makes sense to me, yeah. and it gets me excited. You know, it, it's, and it, it's like I know this ain't about me. It's like I'm not getting about all excited about you know my season or all that sort of stuff. Or excited for this, or excited for you, or excited for my wife. It's like no, I'm excited because I see the Lord in it more and more, and more and more see Him as the High Priest, King, and Lord of Lords. Amen. Right. Yeah. And from there, I have the confidence to like, hey. If he wants to bless us and it feels like we can handle it, then it's going to be all good. Bless me, bless you, bless you, right? As, as we can handle it. And if, it's, if we're not um, um, able to, if it's not his will that we have what it is that we desire, he'll give us what we need to be able to handle that too. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, and what, is, what does he give? The, 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 the satisfaction of he is who he is. Yes. I'm cool with that. Yes. Right. I hope you guys are cool with it, too. Right. right? I hope that as we go through these studies, you see more and more of them. The yeah. whole book, it points to him. That's what it it's sure all about. Does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, if you guys do enjoy uh, the studies, we hope that you support at uh, bronzeserpentmedia.com. Grab the mugs. You know, you know, he loves it. You know, when we toast to him with these mugs, we want to be up here in these studies like, yeah, right. Always looking for an excuse to raise a drink to him. You know what I'm saying? So these opium dig mugs. Sipping style. Make sure you go to the website, <laughs> grab the shirts, get the music, 20 pound sledge. Hopefully, you know, it's like uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to, you know, before I go and record another album, y'all, I really want to step up my recording game and stuff like that. Re you know, productions like, you know, we want to be pleased, man. We want to rock the gospel. Y'all want to do it proper. So, yeah. you know, it used to be, you know, YouTube used to be a place where it's like, hey, you got some content. You want to share it. And it was friends. It was like, you know, just friends. Now it's become like a thing where it's like and, and it's and it's good because the Lord is definitely worth it. Right. Yeah. But, you know, when you only had so much resources, you know, you just you do what you can to get your idea out there. And it was just like kind of like family, just sharing stuff with each other. And, right. you know, and, and you had that sense of, you know, that not just because it was, hey, you were lazy or just did it, but you just worked with what you had. Mm -hmm. You wanted to share some ideas and YouTube was great for that. Yeah. You know, now, you know, you know, it, it's become very competitive. You want your content seen and you've got to really right. step up your game. And you guys, because you're supporting, you're helping us to get, you know, better, you know, gear, get better lighting. You know, I've, I've had this camera that you guys helped me get, you know, for, for a long time ago. Uh, and I'm still, I just got a lot of miles on it, but you know, maybe up time to, you know, to, to step up the grade on it and get me a better camera and stuff like that. But you guys are helping me like get, you know, uh, better gear. You know, and we'd like to put these things for, uh, to use for his glory. So that's Amen. what your support does. You know, yes. just trying to make, uh, you know, we're competing for, you know, for souls, y'all. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's what it for comes real. down to. We're trying to cast that seed, you know, and, and we and we want to make sure that in this competition, we are doing it honorably and do it in a way that pleases him. Amen. Pleases the Lord. It's what yeah. we're trying to do. And uh, with your support, you know, we want to be able to, you know, be you know, on the front lines of, of, of helping to, to promote, you know, the gospel and the culture and, and do it in the ways that he's endowed us to do it, you know, to be creative and, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And we really want to do that. And uh, when you guys support at Bronze Serpent Media, you know, that's that's what it's going towards. So I hope you guys can, you know, start to see, you know, the quality improving, you know, uh, it's it's you know, we as you guys see, we've only we can only reach a few. We've been very marginalized and we can only reach a few. And it's it's a slow it's a slow climb. But as you can see, we haven't given up. And little by little, right. we're trying to improve, you know, with the resources that we get, you know, by how we can reach folks. And, um, you know, we want to show y'all it's it's just one of those things that you want to show that it has value, you know, in the culture. And, um, you know, so with your support, you know, let's show that we really do treasure uh our, our high priest and king and his word yeah. you know uh and we want to promote that so you know please you know hit up the website 
uh, you know, drop a buck in the bucket. You know, we really appreciate that. Uh, we're not a nonprofit organization, so it's an actual sacrifice when you guys make it to show that, hey, this, this stuff holds up in the market. This stuff should be, you know, mm -hmm. the stuff that's really valuable in the market more than this mine rot that's out there, right? So, you know, that's uh, between that, you know, the audio book, A Solid Right Cross, like I said, the music project, 20 Pound Sledge, you know, so we can, and we want to step up our game to make the next album even, you know, more meat, more beef, you know, more beefy, you know, grizzly grooves, man, just really bring it to where it's like, yeah, you know, have some really nice glycemic melodies in there, you know, for, you know, to, uh, and, and of course, you know, the, um, the thought provoking lyrics. You know, um, you know, that are that's as heavy as the music is. We want to do that, you know, and uh, really compete, you know, in the culture. You know, the darkness is trying to, hmm. you know, to to, um, to take people. And, you know, we're trying mm -hmm. to get out there and, you know, keep them from giving over to the dark side. Yeah, right? bring the light of the gospel to the culture. That's right. Salt and light, babe. Yep. Right. That being said, Father in heaven, thank you so much. We hope that our study was a blessing to you, Lord. We're so thankful for what it is that you know you bless us with to share um, we hope that we're not deceived by any other influence uh, not by our self-righteousness not by anything uh, that uh, you know it's always our hope um, that uh, you know we are sharing what it is that you know you breathe to us in your word and that you be pleased uh, with what we share uh, in our in our fellowship and for y'all listening, we thank you so much. We're so blessed by uh, you tuning in and, uh, yes. and being our classmates as we journey uh, through the scriptures. And uh, we hope that's a blessing to you that, uh, you know, it, it, it gets you pumped, gets you psyched, right? <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's really even more pumping up and, and psyching up if you get these mugs to, to drink deep of the, the psych, right? <laughs> so blessings to y'all. Thank you so much. Make sure you share this stuff. Tell folks to come and join us in the Zopium Den. They yes. need it. Them heathens need it. You, you yes. know some heathens that need it, right? <laughs> we all do. <laughs> so right on, right on from CJ and I. Shalom. Shalom.